the way. We wanted men. Let's go for it. Welcome to episode 103 of the Smugglers Galaxy podcast. With me, uh, well, got Jason with me as always. I'm Glenn. Hello. And Hello. we've got our buddy Ryan Shaw with us, who's a- uh, Hey, fellas. He's a uh, amateur. I calls himself an amateur sculptor, but I don't think you're any, you're a lot more than amateur. You're way no. more than, than- Yeah, I have been paid for one thing and- well, I've been paid for a lot of things, but one thing professionally. So I guess you can, I don't know, somewhat amateur. Yeah. So Ryan Shaw's with us. Ryan is a action figure maker, customizer. He's created some incredible pieces and he's been known in the hobby for what, 20 years now, maybe longer. Yeah. At least the, going back to the old rebel scum days Yeah, where I was Bantha five there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And uh, and so you heard our conversation last week about the retro collection. You had some thoughts, so we'll we'll get yeah, into that yeah. in just a little bit. But wanted a little know a little bit more about you and how you got into the hobby and uh, um, why you started to make action figures, custom ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, is years ago I I had a lot more time for it because uh, I I'm a dental technician by trade. I make teeth. And it's a lot of the same techniques and processes and materials that jewelers use, that uh, sculptors use. A lot of the old Kenner guys came out of the jewelry industry, um, the sculptors. And, and it's the same stuff. And, you know, I, you know, when I got back to the hobby, I wanted to have the figures that we didn't have when we were kids. Uh, I think the first thing I made was the Cantina band member. And I cast it out of dental acrylic, so it looked like a his head looked like a tooth, but uh, <laughs> it worked out. Um, and then, you know, I kind of worked it out. I have the same materials that they used. I actually got the Kenner formula for wax from a a, a guy years ago, and formulated and make my own Kenner formula wax, and have like a wax pen and the sculpting tools. And then uh, once I finish the sculpt, I'm like a um, silicone mold of it and cast the pieces in color resin so i don't know if you guys remember i made it back in the day i was kind of known for i did like the first real uh slave leia yep that was kind of from yeah. scratch it was like a bespin leia that had been modified yep. um and then i did a gargan she was they were both really popular on rebel scum back in the day yeah. They, they still are popular, man. Don't fool yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, they're not where, you know, like Stan Solo is now. I never had anything made in China, although I always wanted to. Yeah. And those things are, his his new Slave Lay is really nice. And well, I, We had one at the uh, the meetup. It was pretty, uh, the October, the winter, summer social, somebody had one and it. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. No, his stuff is really impressive. A little scary some of his you know it's his yak face is blue snag i mean you know when, if you know him and you hold him they're not the same thing but it's still it's you know it's kind of as close as they can get is just like nutty so you would make the wax wax sculpt then you would make your mold and then you would mold it with plastic a uh -huh. resin uh -huh. and yeah, then how yeah. what was the extent of the run how many did you make for those probably about a, yeah probably about 100 of each maybe okay. 150. I would basically do it until the molds ran out because those silicone molds only have a certain amount of time that they last and then they break down. Yeah. And you got to either make new molds or uh, just ditch them. And by the time the molds gave out, I was just, I was bored with it. You know, I do yeah. my run, people got theirs and they seem to be happy with them. Yeah. I saw that Gargan go for fifteen hundred dollars on deal or no deal recently which yeah, was incredible yeah, <laughs> and i was like you know what the crazy thing is i never even saved one for myself oh no 
<laughs> no, I have one slave Leia and uh, I saved her, but I never saved a Gargan. I'm also the reason why a lot of a uh, buddy of mine got um, a Vlix mailed to him from Brazil. And when, uh, when he got it, it was just destroyed. And he, he like reached out to me. He's like, can you put this back together for me? And I was like, yeah, I can put it back together for you if I can make a mold of it. So <laughs> I'm kind of the reason why there's bootleg Vlixes out there. But those ones that Mark Poon makes, they're based on the one from me, but they're, he got it somewhere. I don't know how, but they're really nice too. Yeah. Yeah. They, they look incredible. Yeah. Yeah. They look legit. And, so. and that, and for that little short window, he did like a special box for it. That was just amazing because the little cutout window was like the shape of Lix's head. Uh, it was really neat. So what do you what are your thoughts on things like the reproduction villixes and now there's yak faces and blue snaggletooth out there? What are your thoughts on that kind of stuff? I th there's a place for them. I mean, I you know, there's some people who are just so anti-repro and I can understand it. I think it dilutes the hobby, but uh but I think it's also an inclusive hobby. So mm -hmm. if you're okay with it's not the real thing, but it's a representation of something that you don't want to spend because prices are ridiculous um especially for what we paid for back in the day but uh you know if somebody wants a blue snag doesn't want to shell out a couple hundred bucks you know a 35 dollar one for him that's a placeholder until you can get a real one right you know what i really like are the figures that were never made yes like the leg it's just it's just so yeah yeah and they did it right well yep. he does it right yeah Stan Solo, you mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Although this kind of sounds like a commercial for him now, which I don't mean. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can pull back from that a little bit then. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, well, let me, before we disappear on that, before we, uh, you know, step away from that, I mean, is his stuff marked to where you can tell the difference? Once yeah, you... yeah, I think it is. I think it's it's marked on the leg. It, it, it okay. doesn't have any uh, real markings. Um, no, and if, if you know, you can easily tell that they're, uh, their repo things um but you know i just wonder how far he's gonna go you know he made he's made ula so far and yep. the leia and you know i don't know what other new it would probably be better if he stuck with more figures that were never made you know probably cause less of a like that bantha uh narayan showed me that bantha he had and that thing's just nuts the box is perfect it's just it hits every button right yeah he made a just so people understand we made he made a reproduction or was it inspired by kenner yeah yeah that's what you could call inspired it's inspired by kenner bantha it's got it's kind of like the uh the tauntaun where it's got the it's like trap yeah, door it's trap door it's like a it's like a do back yeah 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 but they're they're yeah that's just fun stuff pretty cool you know. stuff yeah and for for it to be made in factories for to be made in a factory and still be what is it about 100 bucks yeah maybe that's still pretty pretty cool that you can get something like that you know for a reasonable price yep yeah and, and stan solo is not the local guy that was doing a bantha right no no, no. no he's not he's, he's not local as. okay cool yeah, because I know there was a, a local guy that did a bantha, and there was a big stink behind it. So. Well, there were there were. I'm not going to go into it because I don't know the whole story. But there were two right. competing, two competing, and basically, well, I think it, what is it, or something like that. Yeah, and that was turned out to be kind of a scam, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we yeah, can I, allegedly we, we could. Yeah, alleged. I, I just alleged remember scam. that was. A, yeah, there was a local guy <laughs> making it, and there was a big stink about it and i just wanted to make sure it wasn't the same guy so yeah no this uh, is yeah this was made in china i think that one was like a resin pour with bubbles and stuff like that so okay yeah that's what i that's what i heard yeah allegedly no allegedly let's keep it vague yes, because we're not making vague, any yeah. accusations but we were talking <laughs> about oh go ahead go ahead i don't want to get sued for our tens of dollars we make off this podcast <laughs> make nothing <laughs> yeah, you well, have the Jason, air i'm last, breathing right last week you were you were talking about the uh, the retro figures, the new ones. Yeah, and you know I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I like a crazy person. I talk back to half of them, <laughs> and uh, 
I was like, oh, wait, I know those guys. I can yeah. actually talk to them about it. <laughs> so I gave you a shout out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Yellow so, Way. We're talking well, about the no, retro collection. Well, just to set yeah, it up real quick, yeah. we're talking about the retro collection. And last week I made the comment that there was just something off about it. And I thought it was that it's sculpted in ZBrush. So there's not the imperfections. It's perfectly symmetri symmetri symmetrical. Symmetrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And, and, Big and word, Jason. Also, <laughs> the thing that really gets me the most about digital sculpting is the mirrored aspect. It's where you basically only have to sculpt half of a figure. It's like ah. the biggest the biggest example of that is uh, Funko's reaction creature from the Black Lagoon. You could literally cut that figure in two, put a mirror next to it, and it's the same figure. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the days, those those things had what what you know what I think they could probably do, and it would be great. Would be you do your initial sculpt and printing in. ZBrush and then whatever you print it in and make it a little bigger for reduction and then send it to, you know, send that to a sculptor who can make a silicone mold of it, fill it with wax, and then take their, their sculpting to, tools to it and, you know, add a little bit of artistry. Uh, for one thing, for the most part, the details all are those are really a bit too soft. Yes. You know, if you look at if you look at old vintage figures, it's like one of my favorite vintage sculpts is Leia Bouche. That's just such a beautifully sculpted, you know, the drapery of the half the cloak on the back, the contraposto stand that she has. Yep. It's just, you know, and she there are details there, you know. Yeah. It's just, it seems that a lot of them think that vintage is soft details and a really bad likeness and yeah a lot of the vintage figures had poor likenesses like han you know yeah han didn't really like han but uh you know there was still a lot of if you i had the opportunity to look at uh hard copy legs of uh bosk one time and when those when those guys sculpted it they sculpted it by hand and those scales on his legs are they aren't perfect but you know they have a, they have a, a for for lack of a better word they have soul to them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and there's a real big difference between the hard copy and what you finally got because after the steel molds were cut they would polish the inside of the mold, well, the inside of the steel uh, molds, and that's why you lost a good bit of the detail. So I think I think. You know, if 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 Hasbro would send out to hell, I'd do it for free, or you know, better yet, Gary Ray, Ray Weaver, have him do it. Yeah. You, know, you talk about somebody who really knows the vintage aesthetic. He he'd be able to put it down on it perfectly. Absolutely. Some of the stuff yeah. he's making just recently, the uh, the the ceremony scene at the end of a new hope. He's <laughs> he's got the yellow I, jacket. I don't, I don't yeah. know where he the time. I don't know where he's just, yeah, he's a madman. Yeah. But, you know, I don't see why Hasbro just didn't, when they were starting the retro lineup for doing new lines, why they didn't just, because he basically created that first wave of Mando figures on his own. You know? Oh, oh um, Toy Weaver? Gary Ray Weaver. Yeah, yeah Gary Weaver. They were, and they were perfect. They were perfect. But if you look at, you know, like the biggest, the biggest culprit of those, the first wave of Mandos, look at that quill he's basically mirrored down the center too. He has a, a scarf around his neck and it's just, it's draped right in the middle. It's not to one side or anything. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any like real folds to it or anything. And it's just like his left arm is exactly as his right arm. His left leg is exactly as less, mm -hmm. you know, these, these vintage figures, they had the, the light, the slight quirks to them, you know? Yeah. Gave them a gave them a, a vitality. Yeah. If you could say. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah, I have the Ahsoka retro sitting in front of me. And as soon uh -huh. as you said as said soft, it light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. The de details on her face just are not there. You, you know, it's just it's a soft fit. Now it makes it's like a light bulb went off and it's like well, that's it's what's just wrong like with this you. this week I was I was lucky enough to find uh 
I live on an island and I rarely get to town. And the two stores we have in town, a Walmart and a Target, have very poor toy sections. So I was able to get a uh a oh the new Vader. Yeah, yeah the retro Vader. Oh, you but, put a new cape uh, on them. I put a new cape and I put new legs because I didn't like the other legs. I put vintage legs on it. Oh, okay. Uh yeah, I boiled and popped the, you know, the legs he comes with have the skirt on them, the mm -hmm. half skirt. Yep. And I just didn't like it. And I had some vintage Vader legs sitting around. And, you know, that's that's kind of the figure I wanted. Why is that would showing up? Yeah, there it is. That that would be the Vader, the one you're holding. So you have a vinyl cape on it. You have new legs, vintage legs, but it's still the upper yeah, body. Yeah. The red eyes, the I lightsaber. Love the that, red eyes. Yeah, the red, the red lightsaber that he can hold. It doesn't extend out. And I feel like that would be the, the mm -hmm. figure that they would make in 1986 if they kept it going. 86, yeah. 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 And and I, I don't have a problem with the soft goods cape. I think if they did it in 86, that would have had a soft goods cape. Yeah. It's just the cut on the one that came with this figure is just odd. It 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 doesn't drape correctly, like say on the uh vintage general Lando. Mm -hmm. This one just has a big wide scoop neck and it just kind of sits low on his, you know, and I can understand they did that for manufacturing, but uh, you know. I kind of like the one I just made. <laughs> yeah, no, that looked really cool. And you, you showed it. And I'm like, that's a pretty awesome figure. Looking. Yeah, yeah. I like the legs on it, too. So. Yeah. Um, he's got magic but, legs. You know, he's got magic legs, Dan. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant um, Dan ice cream. And I just, I don't know how many more of that, of those figures I'll pick up. Yeah. So do you, you have a full run of what, 97, 96, whatever there is? Yeah okay yeah, yeah and did you stop uh, after that you still collect yeah, for today the most part. yeah for the most part and and uh, you know what and i and i've had them for i've had them for years but the thing is is i you know i'll still kept pick up the vintage collection figures because you know as much as in terms of the retro line i'm not crazy about the digital aspect the new figures when we get a really well a really new completely new designed uh vintage collection figures they they've been hit out of the park after hit out of the park yeah. just they're just beautiful and then that digital printing on the face is you know they're making figures that are almost worth 15 dollars a piece right you know i don't want them to go to 15 which they already kind of are but uh yeah i passed up on uh have any of your targets gotten their requisite uh 20 migs in this week yes yes yeah because yeah. i i found a, a, all, all our target has is about eight landos and about 12 mix yeah. and i went through all of them didn't find the red uh the red arm yeah the red arm my brother found me one in atlanta though so i'm covered on that one awesome. but you know they're great figures yeah I love what Hasbro's doing with the vintage collection. It's just like what I was saying with the retro. It's just, you know, they just don't have, like you're saying, the soul. Um, they they would never get creative now because it's my understanding they took a blue snaggle tooth and they sculpted Bosk on top of that. Yeah, yeah, they did, they did. And, and they crazy. would just they would just start fresh nowadays, and you wouldn't get that kind of creative figure creating you not that it affects the figures it sits on the shelf but it's still just a nice little fact that you wouldn't get now and it was it was totally understandable why they did that back in the day it was because why 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 recreate the wheel just go ahead and you already have this because the big thing when sculpting these things is just moving a lot of material getting a basic figure form um for the most part i do that in uh clay because clay is much easier to work than wax so you just, you sculpt, you get your rough sculpt in uh, clay, then you make a mold of that, and then you pour that in wax, and then you do all the refining and the, this, the, the, the wax that I use is, is a pretty hard material. It's not like candle wax. Mm. It's, you can take a file to it and, and you know, get a, make, make it flat, or you can even, you know, extend pieces out and let them flow and stuff like that, just because, you know, and if you drop it, it shatters because mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's, it's almost like a plastic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And over the years, I've repaired for a few people uh, wax prototypes that have, you know, fallen and 
you know, snapped an arm off, snapped the leg off. Wow. The responsibility of having to mend that. How do you, how do you handle oh, yeah. that? Like very carefully. Yeah. Very carefully. Yeah. Yeah. You basically the, the, the tool I have is like a long, a long tip and you just kind of, you make one area in the back and then you just go in there with that hot tip and just kind of loot everything back together internally. And then, you know, that one area that you went back in, you cover that back up and you, you know, some people just glue those pieces back together and it'll take glue easily, but mm -hmm. you know, you always see the crack line. So you would have to mend it with wax and then kind of smoothen it out and all that stuff with yeah, the wax. Yeah, because and, yeah. that wax, it never gets old. It's yeah. always, and you know, when before I started making my old wax back in the day, I would, uh, I would go on eBay and I think it was mostly Ron Salvatore who would sell just like extra wax castings from um, Kenner, the hmm. Kenner guys. Yeah. Because they would get a mold. A lot of them were, a lot of them were uh, uh, Care Bear pieces mm -hmm. and doll heads, whatever dolls Kenner was working on at the time, uh, and strawberry shortcake. You get a lot of things where, hey, this mold is sitting around. I need a basic shape of a of a head. Let me just pour it with this, and I got it. You know, I've got a head to start working on. And then you basically hang all your details off of it, like you know you. You move around what you need to move around and then refine it in wax. So, and I just wow. think it's not a, it's not a big process. If, if they basically, if they basically, if, if Hasbro sent out what they, what they turned into figures, if they just sent that out and let some sculptor do a little extra to them, it's like this new Vader, he, the old Vader had the little tips of the tusks on his mask. This yeah. one doesn't. He also had a little bit more of a, a, scoop, a scoop out in the end of his nose. And this figure doesn't, you know? Yeah. And, you know, if you've seen some of these original sculpts, they're just absolutely amazing. The, 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 the detail and, and it's like one of my favorite eras, and Glenn, you know this, is post star wars when they're doing lines like beetlejuice ghostbusters uh what's that other line they did there glenn of uh, some time travel movie yeah uh, something about that bill and ted your, right <laughs> your those sculpts you have those hard copies you have are just beautiful mm -hmm. they were those sculptors at kenner really had hit their stride you know they had so much personality so much they were just really neat Mm. It, the designs were a little goofy sometimes but you know they were really d well done yeah it's kind of got a zany feel to them like beetlejuice uh -huh. in particular was just like what where's this going but it was fun and it was yeah, a cool yeah. toy that, that beetlejuice the one that comes with the uh bowling pins yeah those little portraits on the bowling pins are little miniature works of art yep yeah yeah, each one they, was different. They, they yeah, doing. Yep. yeah, right. And, and watching you look at my those hard copies that I've got gave me a totally new respect for them, you know, and totally new understanding for them. You know, it's no, you got it. Yeah, you you've got to have a huge respect for those those guys because they were just yeah yeah they were really they really were hitting the well I've already said that but they're yeah they're really great figures yeah. 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 So when did ZBrush come on the market? Oh, you're, you know? you're going down a long pass with me. I'm okay. kind of a Luddite. Um, you know, I I I haven't gotten into it. I will. I just haven't gotten into it yet. Yeah. Um maybe next week have a have a sculptor, a digital sculptor on yeah. the show. Let <laughs> do a, a tort retort. Yeah, I'm thinking it was in the within the past decade. Yeah, yeah, where it really became on the market. But it's yeah. just absolutely amazing what what people can do. You know, when the book of Boba Fett was, you know, each week a new episode would come out. And by the end of the week, five or six people out there had brand new figures. Yeah. Yeah, within a, you know, I think Within somebody, a day. It was like, how are you? Yeah, what within you, a day sometimes. Do you not sleep? It's just like, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, 
yeah, that's pretty cool. But, you know, once again, some of those could be gone over by a, a <laughs> by a, a traditional sculptor. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's was that all done in ZBrush? That's how they were able to get it done so fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. can't you can't really you can't really sculpt that fast. Okay. Um, especially from, you know, if you're watching the if you're watching the show and you're like taking, you know, stills from the show and working from that. And, you know, like Jason said, basically, literally, I think I saw a couple that were the day after. Yeah. 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 There's a character who introduced in the, the next. Who was the big Wookiee? I forget his name. Black K. We don't say his name because yeah. we apparently yeah. we say I it swear. wrong. <laughs> I, swear with, yeah. I swear within the in, within the week, there were at least four really good ones out there after he showed up on the show. Yeah. That's crazy. Right, that, that blue Kenner stuff out, I mean Hasbro stuff out the water. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm just I'm wondering. I'm wondering when when, you know. I just wonder why they don't, with everything in production, I also wonder why they don't have these things ready to go when the shows are, you know, out. It, Although, oh, the, Obi, the retro Obi-Wan was pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, but that wasn't a Filoni show. It's my understanding Filoni's trying to keep everything secret like George just Even did. everything under wraps. I can understand yeah. what Baby Yoda doing that because he was, you know, such a surprise. We might not get a Ahsoka show figures for another 18 months after the show because that is a felony driven show, but yeah. It, when is that comes out? The next one is Andor, right? Andor comes out in September. Mandalorian is in Mandalorian season three is in uh February, and then I think sometime next summer is Ahsoka. Okay. Okay. Do you think we get a retro line with every show or are they gonna skip Andor? Yeah, I think we'll get a good six figures of each show in the retro line before they move on to the next one. But are you guys collecting those? Uh, yeah, I am. The, yeah. the the retro stuff is is what catches my eye. Now, with the Ahsoka show, all bets are off for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna I'm yeah, gonna buy be, whatever comes out. Yeah, you'll be you'll be full in. Yeah. Be in black series, yeah. vintage collection, retro collection, anything else that they have. Yeah, it gets I, to be a little too much, but you know, pick and choose. Yeah, pick it's tough choose. with three lines. I'm backing out of uh, the Black Series a little bit here. Uh, when yeah. the Black Series came out, I started, and then I got like a little bit in, and I was like, "You can't do this. You can't do everything." Uh, I'll pick and cho choose retro, but I'm a uh, vintage collection for life. Yeah, it's starting to agitate me all the uh the troopers that they're releasing and yeah. repacking and it's just there's there, it just doesn't feel fresh or vibrant anymore it feels just yeah. used and old and um, not well, exciting. As, as, as you know as quickly as they could get new figures with with digital sculpting and 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 tooling rapid tooling they could get uh vintage collection figures to market much quicker um but, you know, Hasbro has never turned down the possibility to, you know, do a repaint and get extra, mm -hmm. which is understandable. You know, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to at some point buy two MIGs just because of the, well, I need to buy another MIGs too so I can make a Mud Trooper. Yeah, I've seen right. uh, the Vintage Collection online. They give you like a step-by-step. -step. There's five figures that you kit bash to make a Mud Trooper. Yeah, yeah. And it looks perfect. It looks yeah. great. And they'll do yeah. it at some point. I'm sure they will now that they've seen that. Hasbro yeah. will follow go, the money. To go off topic for a second, uh, yeah. did any of you get uh, Star Wars grapes this week? No, but I saw those boxes. Yeah. It's just a I rabbit know. hole. I don't want to go down. Oh, you got one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Of mine was up uh, at Sam's the other day, and she uh, texted me and she's like, You need this, right? And I was like, Yeah, I didn't know about it. But, uh, if for eight bucks you get three pounds of grapes and a really great wooden box that's better than it needs to be yeah yeah no, so, they look good i like the hand yeah, yeah it looks like it's handmade uh with the stamps and everything the the burnt in yeah, stamps so sitting there, you know it's a great it's a great idea because this week i wouldn't have bought three pounds of grapes <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you didn't I, know you needed grapes right exactly exactly and then 
you know, I still, I still upset that I missed out on what was it like the Midwest somewhere where some dairy actually put out a uh, blue milk. Yes. Yeah, they do that <laughs> up north. Yeah. yeah, it had a logo and everything, and yep. it was just like a small market. Yeah, Turkey Hill is that it? Pennsylvania, I think. Was that where it was? I think. Uh, yeah, I think it may have been, or it was somewhere where I think a friend of my wife's was, and I was like, "Do you think they could go to the grocery store for me?" And she's like, "No." <laughs> do they FedEx milk? <laughs> Can they yeah, overnight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what you want to do. We didn't talk about what we picked up this week, Glenn. No, well, that, we did that, not. Yeah, that's my that's my. That's your pickup is the, yes, the grapes, <laughs> the Vader and the grapes. Yeah. <laughs> um. You want me to go? I'll go. I, 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 I mean, up... all I got was a Vader Black series. That's all I uh, picked up this week from Kenobi. From Kenobi. So I picked up the Bo Katan. Well, I went to, I got to also kind of report on the on the show yesterday if you want me to, but we can get, we, or we can do that another day. But uh, no, we, you can do it. We can do it our, a little bit. Yeah. So I went to Legion Con yesterday and I picked up a Bo Katan from uh, the guys at Nerd, Nerd U had it for 10 bucks. And I'm like, I, I thought I had her. And so I had to pick her up, and then I picked up a um, some kind of. Does that that chest armor on her just kind of look lacking because it's not painted? It Is does. It not painted? No, it's not painted. It, it looks should be at least just a shade off of the uh, rest of her body. Yeah, I have to look at the figure, the the show again. But yeah, that's just it's. It looks plain to me, like you said that. Yeah. That, yeah. When I it when I opened like her up. Hold this to the camera so I can see it. Yeah, so her yeah, it's like her chest is molded gray. Yeah, yeah, and it, a, it it probably is gray on the show, and it should be gray, but it should be just a shade off and you know printed on. Yeah, yeah. You could shave thirty cents off that figure if we didn't have the paint app. I wouldn't even Thanks. go for three cents. We're talking probably like three cents a really. Uh, yeah, and they will cheap out on. They will cheap. Have you seen the recent uh, McFarlane figures? No, no. Just oh, the Superman ones. It just any of the DC ones, any of the, you know, they're absolutely fantastic sculpts. But back in the day, and I understand the economics of it, but back in the day, a McFarlane figure had, you know, 20, 20 spray ops on it, probably. Yeah. And these probably have, you know, 10, 11, 12, maybe, you know, but you can yeah, paint but, them up yourself to make them look really nice. But they're trying to emulate the old stuff, right? So it wouldn't have all the different applications uh, i well no the the ones the super the, friends the soup what was it super powers line the yeah. ones that with the kenner packaging i can understand those being you know limited spray ops but you know his other stuff his regular dc stuff is you know i'll have to take a closer look i guess yeah once again i'm just focused directly on star wars and everything else is just noise get out of my way you don't, you don't take a look at the other stuff in the i look at marvel legends i don't buy them but i still look at them that's about the yeah. only thing yeah i, I picked you... up i picked up this gambit and i was seeing who made it but it's diamond select because i remember the yeah. uh the paint app being pretty cool on it but it's it looks like the diamond select that looks like about an eight inch gambit because it's a couple of years old right uh i think so I, I don't I only paid 15 bucks for it, but have uh, either of you picked up of those diamond select Star Wars figures at the Disney store? No. No. Kind of like what you're saying with the black series. I gotta I gotta control myself. Yeah, I can't yeah. buy there's it. All. Only, there's only there's just so much you can get, but and then they're they're a little too close to the black series. I don't know what yeah. I don't know what the point is of those. They're nice. The fet's nice. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't I, what's the point? Well, they're also electronic, aren't they? The, no, the not Fed? those. No, no, okay. These are just the, yeah, they do have those electronic ones. Are they more statuettes? The, no, they're they're fully articulated. They're articulated. And they come wow. with a bunch of our uh, accessories. Um, you know, I haven't seen one in hand, but I'd like to put I'd like to put that stormtrooper next to a Black Series stormtrooper because that last Black Series stormtrooper came out. That was a you know, even though I don't collect Black Series, I had to get one of those. Yeah, because it's so good, such a good figure. Yeah, they're just they're just black series that just grab me, and I just have to. It's like the uh, Hoth Rebel Trooper that came out probably two years ago now. The one with the changeable faceplates. 
Yeah, yep. that's such a badass figure. What a good figure. The Luke X-Wing from about that same wave. Uh, he's in his he's in his Hoth flight gear, I think, on that one. Mm-hmm. But and again, just an amazing figure, you know, just yeah. good stuff. I bought that Rebel Trooper just because of the the fact that the face changes out. The face just, lights. Yeah, you yeah. got to buy it yeah. just because it's got so much stuff going on. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've looked at the what's it called? The new uh, six inch G.I. Joe Zartan more more than once just for that reason. <laughs> and then I actually saw the new uh, prop master in the store mm-hmm. the other day and man that almost came on with me too yeah <laughs> they did it just it's frustrating and i understand why because you know they don't own the license of star wars but the stuff that has rose putting out star wars versus gi joe it just it's frustrating because of the quality that they're it seems they're sinking into the gi joe figures that they can sink into the gi joe figures versus what they do to star wars yeah, they can it's, throw it's, they can throw a little bit more at it because they're not having to pay that license right yeah yeah uh yeah but before we get too far i want to talk about i want to bitch about this for a minute Uh my wife my wife ordered a men on card ewok king gungan or whatever uh the from the animated series gungan something different star wars gornish yes king gornish gungans are jar jars yeah dude i don't know (laughs) she's the one that's getting into the you that she's got more men on cards than i do which is kind of scary i shouldn't admit that on the podcast but I mean, she, you got uh, prototypes there, though, so don't. Yeah, exactly. She's she's she's, but she found like the king gung what a gorn garnagish gorn or something like Gornish. that. Yeah, Gornish. so she finds a carded one on eBay for, and the guy was wanting like one fifty for it. And she goes, "I'll throw a hundred dollar offer at it," and the guy accepted it, and it was like five bucks shipping. So she's like, "Hey, my king garnish is coming in today." So I reach into the the uh, mailbox the dude shipped it in a bubble mailer from california ah yeah, yeah. so yeah, your heart it, sinks yeah it's it's bad enough when it's a modern figure and they sit, ship it in a bubble mailer the idea Walmart. of vintage one of what is just heartbreaking how bad was it it was perfect we what yes there was no damage there with you yeah i'll go grab it it i'll the, grab both pieces it. The crazy yeah, yeah. thing is the clarity of that bubble. You showed us photos. Oh, it's not wait. yellowed? No, it wasn't yellowed. It seemed pretty clear. He's going into his case. He's opening up his case. I'm describing to the audience what Glenn is doing. Yeah, he's left right the good. room. What did he do that for? Here he comes. He's coming back with his... his. Oh, he's got the bubble mailer and the card figure. So this is what it was mailed in. So it's a bubble mailer. It's just a, a regular one you would get from it's USPS. Not even, it's not even a roomy one. No, no it, has, tight. it has bubble wrap on it. So I'll give them that. It <laughs> came from freaking California. I've... Did it was the star case part of that? No, there was no star case. I put the star case on it. What did he do that for? Because he was bitter for a hundred dollar bid. I, I don't know. He shouldn't have accepted it. That but thing look, is... it's mint. Wow. It's mint. That's amazing. It's, it's got a dog ear right here, but yeah. you could tell it's it was done that way. You know, it's been a dog ear yeah. for a minute. Yeah unpunched i'm like how the hell did this survive a trip from california in a bubble mailer how did she get it for a hundred bucks yeah the dude i don't know she threw a 90 she's she's she'll figure out how much shipping is and she'll throw an offer including shipping and she paid 105 dollars for this and it came in freaking cherry wow that yeah she got lucky yeah I mean that'd be a so how many, figure. How many of the Ewoks does she have now? Carded. She has the the king and queen, of whatever okay. Garnish. And this one's a French one too. I don't know if you could see it because of the glare. Oh, or is it Canadian? It, or maybe it's Canadian. It might be. Yeah, it's Canadian. So sorry, it's Canadian. I I years ago I picked up all of my Ewoks figures for about 10, 20, 10, 20 bucks a pop. Mm-hmm. And then proceed to take them off the uh, card and Ugh. i don't know what happened i did the same thing with the droids mm-hmm. um i remember back then the, the the most expensive uh droid figure i got was um uh tig from yeah 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 Those are... yeah i think i paid 75 for him oh my god then, yeah i sold the whole set uh did you open here, up boba fett yeah. droids I didn't know. I was having a loose set, so I didn't need, I didn't need one of those. He's never been a cheap figure. 
No. no. But now he's Never. a twenty thousand dollar figure, so that would have hurt even more. Yeah. Well, well, years ago I sold my. I was just like, I don't need these, so I sold my Ewoks and my droids. And I swear to God, I sold the whole set of my droids for what basically the price of a loose uh, R two from that set goes for now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Times have changed. I don't, don't 3PO and R2 from that set, don't they go for like 600 a piece now? Yeah. Loose. Yeah, loose. They're loose. Yeah. And they were they were dead men. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> it's a different time. So before we get into Legion Con, I just want to ask, like, what are some figures that you wish uh, Kenner could have made going forward if they continue the line? And what, what do you think Hasbro, what opportunities is, are Hasbro kind of sitting on right now with the retro collection that they're not exploiting? I, what I'd really like to see, and it's really, it would be almost impossible to do correctly. I'd like to see more can Cantina guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the thing is, is the Cantina guys don't look really like their counterparts. No. They're, they're suggestive of them, but, you know, Greedo's got somebody else's body. Yeah. Uh, Hammerhead is wearing a uh, jumpsuit. <laughs> A blue jumpsuit yeah. and that's what makes them absolutely perfect yeah that makes that that makes them scream 70s it, it's i'd like to see i'd Both. like to see who comes up with because if you do them and you do them too too movie accurate you're gonna miss the mark yeah, yeah. but yeah what i've wanted I, i've i was i've been a cantina kid all my life that was my you know main thing so i'd love to see more cantina guys so um, so yeah, Snaggletooth looked like he was ready to go to a disco. So if you were gonna do one of the canteen, <laughs> that let's just makes it that much better. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's say uh, Figure and Dan. If you were gonna sculpt v Figure and Dan with that intent to make it look like he's fresh out of the '70s, what would you do? You wouldn't give him the black. What would you sculpt it? Uh, yeah, I think I think with him, it's easy enough that you could. Uh, that was one of the first customs I made, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And made oh, his head so, out yeah, of the, yeah. resin. Yeah, right, what I used was um, I don't even forget what the figure's called. It's it's the black imperial guy who's all in black. Yeah, imperial Death Star commander, com commander. imperial commander. Yeah, uh, Death Star. Yeah, that no, was Death Star Death Squad commander. It was the one from Empire. Okay. He's got the little hat on. Yeah, he's all imperial commander. I think he is. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. what I used. I shaved off the. Uh, on his and then i slightly bent his arm and i don't think i don't think if they did that i don't think i'd have a problem if they slightly bent his arm you know yeah. so he can hold his whichever instrument you would want to give him i the funny thing is is i was thinking that exact same figure because what's a black you know you're thinking what's a black figure that you could do easy yeah cheap? yeah well, i'll take it's still at my office i'll take a, fig, a picture of it tomorrow and i'll send it to you guys that's awesome um yeah yeah but you know that. i'd like him to do that uh i'd like him to flesh out uh i was always about the creatures and the aliens so maybe flesh out and and you can flesh out uh jabba's palace more because when they were doing return of the jedi you know kenner sent them really good photos of all the characters and you know they're pretty spot on with you know who they're supposed to be yeah it's just the wackiness of the wackiness of the uh cantina i'd really like to see how somebody would do it yeah and, how and would you do moff moff tech because he's all white he's like a furry chewbacca so would you yeah, put him he, in he, something he, he, leader hosens enough uh you could do a little chandra fan the little bad guy that comes with him yep. give him a little vinyl cape like a jawa yeah um but you know there are plenty of people who have tackled these over the years and plenty of people have done really good jobs what i i just really want to see the oddball stuff that was you know because those fab fours including the blue snaggletooth of the original cantina guys they're all really bright primary colors very toyetic of the 70s yeah so you know i'd like to see somebody who maybe didn't have it in the movie but somebody with like a, a, a yellow because the yellow would fit in with the other primary colors uh you know uh you know walrus man being orange and blue not good for the character perfect for the figure absolutely you know? absolutely yeah yeah they haven't done a sand trooper which would be an easy thing to do because you just 
take this you, stormtrooper. You put a pole you're gonna in. See, yeah, you're going to see a sand trooper from uh, from Hasbro soon enough because it's just too easy. They yeah. already have the tooling for um, the arms and legs. You just have to because back in the day, that was another early uh, sculpt I did, um, and I did. I was so lazy. I just did the body as a whole, and you were supposed to drill the arms and legs and just pop them in there instead of doing a two piece, you know, cavity mold for the torso like uh, Hasbro would. Yeah. You know, so. Well, Return of the Jedi is coming up. And if they kind of repeat the pattern that they've done in the past, they released the Star Wars game with Tarkin, they released the Empire game with uh, Snowspeeder Luke. So they're going to release the was a sarlacc game from return of the jedi battle, and battle, battle of the sarlacc sarlacc is that what it was yeah so what comes in that pack do you think i was i don't know Jabba's goons i probably someone from the can uh from the barge yeah yeah i've always liked the guy with the with the he was just a regular human but he had the two horns on his the helmet like this yeah yeah uh, i kind of like to see him or yeah, really, what? I mean, because even for back in the day, for Return of the Jedi, they covered Jabba's goons pretty well. Yeah, they did. We got two Clatoos. Yeah. Yeah. And a we weak got, way and a nick we got a weak way. We got a nick two. We got, you know, we got we got Barada. Uh I wonder if they would make Luke Skywalker because they would go with Han Luke or Leia probably for that game. But he would have the little flap open from the end of the movie when after he's defeated Vader and he's got the white yeah, flap yeah. open. Are they are they doing because they did announce the six they're doing for retro return, right? No, they released the second the, the last 12, second? the last of the first 12. Okay, yeah. But didn't they show pictures? They didn't show figures. But no, I they showed figures. I, the Ben they showed, um Jawa, Tuscan. Yeah, yeah. They C3PO, showed the pictures R2. of the last six. And I don't think those, I think those were just vintage figures that they put in front of the uh, box that they're going to use. But <laughs> you don't think those are the figures themselves? Also, yeah, I, I think they just grabbed something. I think they, I think they're going to, I think they showed pictures at a panel at Celebration. Mm -hmm. What were just the pictures of the figures they were re-releasing. I think it was San Diego Comic-Con they actually had them on display. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Ryan would probably know. So. <laughs> yeah, they had. <laughs> he's Sorry. yelling at us. We're getting a message soon. <laughs> yeah, right. and we, if we, need, we always and know if we when Narayan's listen to the show because we get a message. And he's like, and it's if we this... need to name any of the Cantina guys in the background or any of Jabba's goons, uh, he'd cover that too. He's a genius. Yeah. 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 Well, no. I... I have the figure figured out. I know what they're going to do. All right. They're going to do another Boba Fett. I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I think I want... if, they, if they did an updated classic Fett, people would go nuts for it. Mm -hmm. But with the Return of the Jedi deco. Yeah. 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 I but do they, they already have the tooling for the, the, the classic one. Do they do some new tooling, maybe even a separate backpack? I mean, they have the Absolutely. tooling for the, the rocket firing Jedi, uh, rocket firing Boba Fett that they released as a mail away, so they yeah. could just do that. A rocket that long, yeah, um, yeah. Who knows? But they will. They'll they'll do some game. Um, did either of you get the Tarkin? The game with the Tarkin? Yes, I got the Tarkin. I just I couldn't pick it up. I just didn't like the head on it. And it's yeah. It's, and once again, that body is the Imperial Commander's body, which yeah. every customizer who ever did a uh, who ever did a um, Tarkin, they use that body, which was a good idea. It's that figure when I picked it up for the first time. I'm like, something's off here. And the, mm -hmm. the head is just. It almost looks like if you was... took a Power of the Force two Tarkin head and put it on it, it'd look a little better. <laughs> it was just a little too simple, like. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, they sculpted with the intent of making it simple, not sculpting with the intent to try to do, do the best that they could for this toy, which I think Kenner did. But now they have the tools and technology where they're like, we need to make no, this look simple. Yeah, but it's just like, just like I said, you know, the, pe the people who are probably sitting there, whether freelance or in Rhode Island, who are, who are sculpting this, 
you know, who knows who they are? Are they guys our age who have lived with this stuff all their lives? Do they know the real aesthetic? Who knows? Um, you know, they get a, they get a work order that comes across their desk, make this, maybe we'll look at it. That's why somebody like, you know, Gary, send it to him. He'll make it perfect. Yeah. And all you got to do is send him ahead. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get down on Hasbro too much, but it does sound like from. Uh, no, from I'm what, not getting down on Hasbro. No, no, I know. I'm glad we have these things. Yeah. I just feel like, um, or at least when I talk to people, I hear like the Hasbro team's getting younger and younger. So to answer your question, no, I don't think they have people our age. Okay. There. Okay. Yeah. And I think you kind of need somebody there who, who is immersed in it, yeah. who knows it inside and out, you know, well, could it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to, something just hit me and, and, you know, you just said getting younger and it, it, cause I'm watching the ILM stuff on Disney plus and, you know, they were a bunch of rebels back then, you know, a bunch of guys that were scraping and, and trying and clawing to get, get what they needed to, to make the stuff. Do you think it's because, you know, I don't know, Hasbro or Kenner, sorry, at the time was kind of doing the same thing in the 70s with this stuff, scrapping and clawing to make the toys. Do you think that they're just not, that there's not that hunger like nowadays, like they were back then? Well, I don't know if there, there probably isn't a hunger because they have everything they need at their fingertips. Hasbro is a multinational that gives them every digital sculpting suite that they need. Um, right. they probably, they've got top of the line printers too. It's, it's, I think it's something that probably needs to come more from, you know, knowing this stuff for years mm -hmm. and basically like us living it, you know, thinking about it more than we need to. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't think about Star Wars no, too much. No. <laughs> This podcast makes me think about Star Wars more than I want sometimes. <laughs> I have to have an opinion this week. What is it? <laughs> and he'll message me like on Saturday or Friday night. What are we talking about? I needed something to think. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do a podcast with buddies and ours was just so, it was just basically, we would sit down and uh, have dinner and record whatever came up. Nobody did any kind of planning for it. And a lot of the times it seemed like that's exactly what the show was. <laughs> <laughs> we, we try to do somewhere in the middle yeah. where we have a little bit of planning and a little bit of spot deity. And it, I think yeah. it works out pretty good. Yeah. Well, you do a good show. I just started recent, uh, recently listening. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So Glenn, why don't you tell us about your Legion con experience and then maybe we'll wrap up. All right. Uh, yeah, this was the uh, third Legion con was held yesterday, which was the 20th. Uh, our buddy Chris Hamer, uh, I've been buddies with him for a while. He's been a pretty big, uh, he's, he started off as an artist and went into tattooing and now he's going back into being an artist. Uh, he started this, this is his third Hamer, or I, I call it HamerCon, but he calls it LegionCon. Um, and it's at the American Legion in Smyrna. And uh, that right down, this is one of my favorite shows because the American Legion's happy to have the show uh chris puts on a hell of a show for his vendors he knows how to treat the guys so when you treat your vendors right and you've got everybody it's just a really loose really happy show nobody's stressed out uh it's set up at the american legion so like if you get overwhelmed in the uh and the show floor you can go to the bar they have you know food specials they have uh drink specials so that's you between the bar and and the toy show you can spend all day it's it was from like noon to five so i think it's a perfect you know it's five hours so you you know you're not stressing to get there i got to get there at 8 a.m uh you know you can get there you take your time and then you get off you get out of there at five and you've got the rest of the day uh to enjoy your day you can go you know toy shopping and stuff uh but anyway now that i'm done like gloating over this show it's just I, I really enjoy this show i look forward to it every year what was uh, the sales floor like um a good mix yeah it was a really it had a lot more comic books this year uh than it did last year he had the guy from galactic quest was there uh he had nothing but comic books abt was there they were about 50 percent comic books uh hamer had a show had a booth that was it I, i'd say it was probably about half comics half toys but a really really good mix because both were quality i'm i'm not a comic book guy 
because I, I, I just, I can't get over paying, you know, a couple hundred dollars for a book and never reading it, but I'll pay a couple hundred dollars for a toy that sits on a shelf. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and I, I, I guess it's just because you can't, to me, if you do that with a comic book, you're just looking at the cover and you're not really flipping through and getting the whole experience. Whereas a toy, you could still look at it from all angles and enjoy the whole thing. Um, and I've been really kind of soul searching with that as to why I can't justify comics versus toys. Uh, and I don't know why it's just overthinking because that's what we do. Um, but yeah, it was a, more of a visual person anyway. And right. a three dimensional representation of something is always more than just a 2D flat, you know, unless you're digging in there and opening up the comics, you know, it's just kind of, you can enjoy a action figure sitting there from many angles. Yeah. Right. And it's, I, I, collected, think... I collected comics books for a very short period, about 83 to 84. And they would like mm-hmm. X Men exclusively. I still have them all, and I was buying them because they were going to be worth something one day, and they're not worth anything. No, eighty three, nah. eighty four. Had I gone and started going picking up clearance Star Wars figures, you know, for how much a figure back then? Uh, right. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's the whole power of the Force Two argument. You look back and you were buying power of the Force Two stuff, and if you would have gone the vintage, you'd be sitting on a gold mine yeah yeah well <laughs> I, did the, I did the same thing power of the force too I, I was one of those guys uh one to open one to keep boxed and then <laughs> you know when i lived in the city my brother was a collector too and we were at one of those back on beaver ruin road when they used to have a pretty good show up there we're standing oh there, yeah and there's so much power of the force too everywhere this is like a year and a half or two years after it's out and i was like oh yeah this stuff isn't going to be worth anything <laughs> he's like no he's like get out of it so i sold all my stuff then and uh you know i bought the stuff i liked but you know i made my money back which you couldn't do nowadays no no No. you you could and and then like because he has it kind of set up in a circle the the show so like on the inside of the circle there was a bunch of artists and then the outside was all the comic book stuff so but it was it was steady all day i think he had like four or five hundred people through the door which on a on a little show like that really good really good yeah. And, and you'd go and cause we were with we, the club, I had set up the club table up front and uh, I didn't really, I, I manned it, but I, you know, I was also, I, I it's not as, like I said, it's a, it's a really lax show. So you could walk away for an hour and then come back. Plus you're and not it selling anything. Plus we're not selling anything. It's got flyers. It's really cool. Cause we've got that big banner. That's got the star Wars. It looks like a men on card back. Yeah. And people love walking in there and seeing it. And I was talking to one of the people there and they were like, it's funny because the little kids aren't the ones that want the picture in front of that. It's the dads <laughs> that'll walk in and they're like, I need a picture of this. So, you know, and, uh, um, oh, shoot, I got to make that PVC frame for the banners too, by the way. Yeah. You I do, forgot about I, that. That's all right. So was Gambit the only thing you picked up? Uh, Gambit and then the Bo-Katan. And then I picked up a piece of art from a, a local artist. He did a, a skull, a, uh, alien that was like a piece of, you know, it was like an eight by 10 for, original art for like 75 bucks it's hard yeah. to pass that up yeah, yeah. um hard to pass up yeah and then my wife picked up some um shoot those things it's like in a glass it's got some succulents um uh, terrarium yeah, terrarium. Ter- terrarium she picked up a couple of terrarium somebody had treated the 3d 3d printed like a millennium falcon and hand painted it and put it inside a terrarium it looks great um she picked those up and uh she was going to pick up some more like the, there was a, a couple of Ewoks she wanted and it just didn't, I didn't like the way they looked. She liked the wicket, but then when I looked at it, the face was a little bit beat up, but um, yeah, it, 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 trust me, we could have spent money if we wanted to, but we're, we're trying to hold back a little bit. Yeah. That's always the thing. It's yeah. not hard to spend money at a show. No, it's not, <laughs> not at all. Uh, but there was a good selection because ABT was there. They had a good mix of star Wars, GI Joe. Um Martin was there. He had a good mix of, of Star Wars. Uh, Terry Stair, which I hadn't seen him in a minute, bro- come. To, I've seen him at shows, but I haven't seen him uh, uh, sell. He had a, a. He said he picked up a great collection, and he had a bunch of loose and a, a few men on cards. He had a a twenty one back uh, Fet that he had his I don't want to sell it price on it, but it was cool seeing a twenty one back Fet. Uh, what was what was the price? He wanted four K for it well how was, was it what was it the was, condition of the card yeah 
it looked pretty good. It had a, a like the hang tag looked like it might have been pulled, uh, but it was still there. So it looked like somebody might have pulled it off the shelf and the hang tag might have broke, yeah. but it was still on the card and it still looked, you know, whoever did it, they they fixed it fairly quick. And um, that seems about right for that figure, especially if it's not graded. Yeah, he probably was right on it, but yeah, it was cool seeing it. The the one thing that kind of annoyed me, some the guys over at Nerd View, and this isn't a, a, a shot at Nerd View, so I'm not, shots fired. <laughs> I know they listen. They 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 you know, I, and I I've, I've been friends. Unclear. With them. I don't even know who they are. Yeah, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Matt and Dar- Darren. Dar- I keep wanting to call him Daryl, and he got mad at me, and I keep getting them confused. But you don't get names. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, I don't get names. I'm really bad with names. But uh, they had a sealed Optim- Optimus Prime, G1 Optimus Prime, that my, and I've got a buddy that sells, that is really in the Transformers. So I was talking to him about it. He wasn't there, and I was shooting him emails or text messages about it. And then I went outside and was talking to Kelly and Joel about it, and we were having a discussion about it. And there was this one guy standing next to us, and I thought he heard it. He might have We were being obviously talking about it. We weren't you know, hiding it. He disappears. And we're like, let's go look at that Opt- Optimus Prime. Oh, no. <laughs> he freaking went, bought it. And we're like, you jackass. What was the price on it? They wanted 4K for it. Wow. And he was, bought it for 4K. Was it like Minty Mint? I thought no. Transformer. No. It wasn't Minty Mint. My buddy was going to, we were, I was trying to talk deals with my buddy and what, you know, they were like, yeah, we'll, 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 you know, we'll work with you a little bit, but Yeah. And my buddy that he thinks it would have graded about a 60, maybe a 65. Which is good for Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> so it might have been worth it. But my buddy's also one of those guys. He's like us. He's He's got it all. So you were trying to make deals at this point. Quick question. The yeah. um, Those uh, micro squadrons, the yeah. new one. Did hey, you, yeah. you, got a, you pulled this week. Glenn, you oh got yeah, a pull I did from get a pull. One. Let me. I got to talk about that too. Hold Damn on. Damn it, I was so jealous. <laughs> well, did they have many chases there at the show? Were people they, are people picking them up? Yes. yes. Chase, most yeah. of the chases. Um, I saw the one guy that was at the Powder Spring show that does a lot of the one that he. I think he got a lot of flack, and now he's lowered his prices a lot. That does a lot of target runs. He had the Moth Gideon ones. And he was wanting thirty dollars for him. Okay, that's not bad. That's a sixteen, seventeen dollars ship. And, and I, I thought about picking one up, but eh, I, I didn't what's, pick it up. What's of, of the chases? What's the hot one? The Luke Jedi, I think. And the white Tie Fighter. Those are both limited to five thousand each. Okay, okay. We're talking oh. the X Wing with Luke and Grogu. No, the, he's is it? He doesn't have. He's in Jedi uh, gear, but I don't think he has. He has yeah, still has R two. I don't even know. If, I think oh, it's pretty much this. Grogu. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He doesn't come with Grogu. I thought no, Grogu's not with no. that one. Okay, okay. Grogu sure. comes with the Razor Crest, the first version. All right. Yeah, and I think I was talking to uh, some of the guys yesterday about that. How they, I didn't like the 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 figures. I also talked about it last week that they packaged with the uh, Falcon. And what they, th- somebody said, what Kelly actually said, he goes, I think when they do the snow speeder is when you're going to get, I mean, this land speeder is when you're going to get the form boy Luke. So they don't want to have a lot of crossover. They're, they're trying to think, you know, they don't want to have a lot of crossover with figures. Yeah. So you have to buy the land speeder to get the form boy Luke. And that's where you're going to get C3PO is when the land speeder comes out. Right. Um, is it just, but yeah. does the Chewy that comes with the Falcon, does it look like they cast him in like a translucent brown plastic? He's almost see-through. I haven't close. paid attention. Yeah. I thought the other day at the store came that close to buying it. It's if 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 you're thinking about buying that Falcon, I'd buy it because I think it's one of the best Falcons they made. Because you know, because it's so small, they can do a lot of stuff with it. And they did yeah, a lot of stuff yeah, with that Falcon. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, Micro Machine Star Wars stuff was what brought me back into collecting. Mm-hmm. And man, I had a soft spot for that. And I had the whole run. And then, you know, years later, got rid of that whole run. I still have mine. Yeah. Just Jason's got boxes of them. I guess I'm a micro machine focus collector. If I were to put a uh, name yeah, on myself. You, you, that's your focus, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're known even, for, man. Yeah. I was even silly enough back in the days when Target put out those gift box set and you'd have to buy it everything again just to get one extra figure. Yeah. Our act bar they never made. No, yeah. Yeah. Akbar. And I think there was a Royal Guard that was at one point. I think, I think yeah, he was yeah. released later on, but initially it was only offered to them one of the sets. 
in those little gift sets. Yeah. It's like I've yeah, I I've I've bought I've bought this falcon in here, this little falcon. I've bought it like six, seven times over. Yeah. Yeah. And I got a brass colored one, I got a bronze colored one, and I got a gold colored one too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was dumb enough to buy it back then. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess well, I'm still dumb because I'm still buying the brass colored stormtrooper that Hasbro makes. No. <laughs> the carbonized crap. Yeah, well, you stop. They're you not did... gonna get me on those. No, you stopped buying that though, didn't you, Jason? Yeah, well, they haven't made them, but I stopped buying the credit collection to my credit. Okay. Pun, intended. <laughs> Pun intended. Isn't there a new wave of them coming out? Yes. Okay. Yep. You and I start start I started selling my first because I bought the first five, but then I started selling those. Yeah. So, but, but Jason was mentioning my poll. I totally forgot about this because it was yeah. the beginning of the week. I so didn't. I, <laughs> I was at Target and they had the, they, they had the, the, is it Ventress, Ventress ship and they had the, the normal TIE fighter. So I picked those up and then they had a box of the micro, the blind boxes. So I picked up a couple of blind boxes and I get to my truck and I check them and it had the uh, speeder bike with the Grogu on the back. <laughs> oh that, that's is that a, yeah they have a quite a few chases in the little yeah block, right that's the that's the very limited chase that might be a five thousand one. really wow. it's that hard to find that yeah. one i have um, to go back and watch my video but that was the tough one i thought the ig11 might have been the tough one no but i've pulled i think i've i've bought six of those and pulled two chases out that's of those that's no. not bad no and but jason's Jason's sitting there steaming. He goes, you son of a gun. How many yeah. have you bought, Jason? It's How a great you... line. I hope it goes on. Yeah, it's got a season season three, series three. So at least we're getting two more series. Oh, so they've already thing. announced the third wave? They're saying uh, series three next fall. So we should be getting series two and then series three from next fall. But they didn't oh. mention what it is. No. Okay. He was on a live, Max from uh, Jazzwares. Let me see if I can dig this up real quick. It was on a live stream for the uh, Micro Machine Action Fleet, and then they changed the name to the Jazzware Group. And uh, they had him on as a live stream, and he mentioned a bunch of stuff. They asked him some questions, and oh, well, let me see well, didn't well didn't Micro Machine branded cars come out a few years ago? And were they by Jazzwares or brother? Were they by Hasbro? Not too long ago, they brought back the Micro Machines name with little cars. Yeah, those are part of Jazzwares. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's that... Action Fleet then. Say that again. If they, if they, if they got the license from Hasbro for the Micro Machines name, they should have just used Action Fleet. Yeah, but they didn't. I guess maybe they were thinking because everything's to scale that they were changing the name up and changing yeah, it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And they're, and they're, and if you look at old micro machines, they were more toy ish. And these mm -hmm. are more, these are more detailed, more weathered, things like yeah. that. Well, they're, they're saying that this is the first line that was totally focusing on the ships, that the figures are an afterthought, mm -hmm. basically. And it's it's you know ninety percent ship and ten percent figure or some of those figures to five percent figure. Have you uh, both bought all of them? I'm picking and choosing on those. So and far, I have all of them except those limited chases. I don't. <laughs> I, I you have all of them except the limited chases. Yeah. Have you opened them yet? Yes. Are they built pretty well? Will they yeah. Hold up? Yeah, they they hold up well. Um, the only one, the the wave two. They did a Sabine. They're doing some rebel ships in Wave Two, and I've got to find those bad. Oh yeah, yeah, you'll have to. Yeah, uh, isn't 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 the Tie Fighter the graffiti the the graffiti uh, is that released yet or is no? That that's a hunt for. That's, that's Wave Two. Yeah, Wave Two. Okay, okay. And I is it five thousand or fifteen thousand? That it's one's five. five. Oh right. no. <laughs> yeah, I have a bad feeling about trying to find that one. Yeah, I'm gonna. Good. That's the ship that I've, I've been waiting for, so I'm going to have to just suck it up and pay for it. The 5,000 Luke, what is that going for on the aftermarket? It's like 100 that's bucks, but I feel like that's too much. 150 yeah, bucks. It'll come down over time. It's just hot right now. Yeah, I, well, the ones, the ones that I'm seeing on the aftermarket are going for like 40 to 50 bucks, the normal ones. But I think, you know, like, but that's like going on Macari and stuff. 
yeah. uh, you know, in eBay, they're going, but those people are crazy. And I've seen that, like, like Jason said, the Jedi wants 100 to 150 on Macari, depending, but they're also sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask something for. Yeah. You can ask whatever you want mm-hmm. at that point. Try one more thing. I can't find this interview. Oh. That's well, they were, yeah. Good information. I might yeah. hunt that thing. But uh yeah, they kid they were hitting pretty hard at the ghost uh, at celebration. So if they if at wave three they don't do a ghost, I'm gonna be very upset. And should... they're all in scale, so is the ghost about the size of the falcon? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. If, if they were to make that, it would be. I think yeah. next, I think season season three, wave three would be the perfect opportunity for that because I would imagine the ghost is going to appear in Ahsoka next summer. So I've already warned my wife next year. It's I'm all in on the Ahsoka stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've already warned her. I'm like, you, we will get so, I will spend so much money on, so, on Ahsoka merch that <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> and she's like, I already know. You don't have to warn me. I'm, you're good. Well, she seems pretty into it. Yeah. Yeah. I got lucky. Everybody's yeah, like, you got not a like good you one. Have to sneak things into the house. Uh, maybe. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, no, not that we, we share the same PayPal. I actually, I picked up something off deal or no deal. And uh, she was like, oh, yeah, I saw you spent that money. I was like, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I picked up. Huh? But that's where it ended. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's like, yeah. Because it was somebody had put some uh, wampa teeth on Deal or No Deal, like they were extra wampa teeth, like they'd made them, but didn't they weren't screen used? I saw those. What'd you get them for? Uh, three fifty. That's good. So you did get them. I did get them. Yeah. How are you going to display them? I bought the. There's like a um, a frame that's pliable. Translucent on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna put them in those. Okay. Is it one of those with like the plastic film in between? It just kind of floats there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was my big per I was like, I can't pass those up with me being a Wampa Focus collection and it it possibly be, you know, it being part of something in one of the movies. It, yeah, I had to have those. Yeah, yeah. Now would those have would those have traced back to Stuart Freeborn's studio? Uh it had a COA. Let me see who signed the COA. It might have. That name does sound familiar. No, it wouldn't um, be him because or, that. Well, uh, let me look. I don't know if I'm getting the COA, but I okay. guess we'll see. I Did found the find interview. It? Let me go through this real quick. Uh, Miss uh, Brickenshaw, A Brickenshaw, Nottingham. Yeah, English. In, in, it being English sounds right. I don't know that name though. Okay. That medium thing for me. Don't know that name though. Right. All right, so the Star Wars Micro Fleet Collection Group on Facebook had an interview with Max from Jazzwares, who was the inter- who's the gentleman I interviewed, and Glenn, you were there uh, at Celebration, who was the representative for Jazzwares. Um, Chases, it doesn't seem like there'll be any other way to get Chases other than in-store. No plans to get them online like Hasbro Pulse. They were against having an entire case of Chase vehicles shipped to one store while other stores got none, so... Seems like it's gonna be pretty random. Blind blind boxes. Uh, Max loves blind boxes. No plans to do any battle packs as the vehicles are the core focus and the figures are accessories to the ship, which kind of stinks because the uh, Imperial Troop Transport only comes with two stormtroopers. So it'd be nice to be able to fill that sucker. Waves five waves are planned so far. Not exclusive. Not inclusive of retailer exclusive box sets, etc. There'll be three waves per per year: one in spring, two in the fall. Um, they'll have stuff available at collector cons exclusives would be out of aisle opportunities i'm not sure oh like uh, end caps doesn't sound like wave one launch editions will be re-released down the line without the launch edition sticker so it's just a sticker that's exclusive right now future vehicles um on august 31st they'll have a production sample of a new ship and be sending them over for review at on this page so you might want to check that out uh, fall 2023, another vehicle will have lights and sounds. <clears throat> Ghost, maybe. Hmm. Looking for ways to capital to do capital ships down the line. Uh, they mentioned that backdrops included. The vehicles you see are the vehicles in the line. Max mentioned Geonosis as a background and quickly said, uh, you didn't hear that. So I would imagine more Geonosis ships are coming. Probably the 
the one where they drop the troop drop ship you know like the gunship gunship yeah, they, thank you yeah. yeah possibly hinted the damaged tie fighters coming down the line uh shuttle is being worked on didn't specify which shuttle but said it's not the imperial shuttle which i'm sure is coming at some point um and then let's see that's pretty much it Look for Walmart Collector Con later this month for stands. So maybe they're coming with a, a line mm. of stands for these ships. Um, some other things, mid-COVID 2020, the line was pitched to Lucasfilm. Uh, the machines, the figures are machine painted. Um, Max loves the design of U-Wing and TIE Striker, so maybe we'll get those. Fans no noticed fans are vocal about Rebels. He didn't anticipate the fandom growing like it did. The ghost can have a lot of play features and sounded enthused about the ship. Uh, not looking to do missiles at the time. Bo bombs will be so small you'd lose them, so don't look for missiles or I'm, firing action. I'm fine with that. I'd prefer them not to have that. And it's approximately 196th scale. 96. So. Um, you guys are you guys are hit retail much more than I'm able to. A lot, a lot more stores. Are they selling well? They seem to be. I saw some yeah. more this week, um, but I don't know if that they just put them out or what. But for the first couple of weeks, it seemed tough to find. So hopefully yeah. um, the line will continue. Do you guys yeah. probably hit the same targets, the same Walmarts yeah. in your area? So you'll be able to track how how well they sell. Yeah. Yeah, I I actually hit one. I hit a target a couple of days ago, and this is just some guy being a jerk. Uh, I I. I'm looking at them. They had a, had a couple of X wings, and then they had the, the Jedi Tie fi the Jedi fighter, and the figures weren't there. So I'm looking them over, and I'm like, "Did QC just totally miss this?" Because you could tell the bubble was intact for the most part. And um, next thing I know, I look at where the the things are. Somebody had taken a razor and sliced underneath where the figures are, and popped them out on three different ships. Yeah, they're jerks out there. Yeah, and if you wanted, if you weren't paying attention, you would have never seen it. Yeah, yeah. I don't and you, know why you would do that. I, I the figures suck. But, why would somebody but, want them? But at least with those, you can tell. Wait until Hasbro starts putting Black Series out in solid boxes. Oh my well, god, it, it's going to be a nightmare. You're gonna you're gonna get home with a anything I buy, I'll check very well in the store. Yeah, I saw someone yeah. post today in the Georgia action figure group uh, Spider-Man, but the eyes were slightly off center. So you, he's got his webbing where he comes down to his nose, like through his eyes, but then the eyes itself is slightly off. But it's one of those boxes where you don't so see the figure before they... you buy it. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that from uh, a lot of second or third party or you know like second uh, second chance, a lot of uh, you know retail stores or yeah. resellers. They're like, how the hell are we going to uh, compete with that? How do we know what somebody's selling us is what what is supposed to be in there? And and even returns at the store. Yeah, the, you can even have you can even have a blister. And when you return something to the store, if you're unscrupulous, you can put anything in there and they'll accept it. You know, they're not yeah. looking at the they don't know who these characters are. They aren't looking at even at the package. So, you know, you've seen some of those crazy repacks, those you know somebody's popping something into it that's not even anything near it yeah, yeah. and just wait until the box is completely you know you'll get some rocks in there more than anything else. <laughs> that's oh man <laughs> so ryan we're, we're oh go ahead i was gonna no no up. no. i didn't even think about somebody being that much of a jerk yeah we saw some there was a never Canadian... underst never underestimate <laughs> what the amount that somebody can be a jerk yeah, Hasbro needs to put that that uh, same kind of tape that Lego uses. When you peel it off, mm -hmm. it kind of leaves part on the tape and on the box itself, so you know that the seal has been broken. Because uh, there was one guy who returned something to Toys R Us in Canada. I think it was one of the Boba Fett's, and when he opened it up, it was just like Army Men and other plastic crap. Yeah, it oh, had been damn. returned to Toys R Us and it had a black sticker on it, which was wasn't it that, the normal. Uh, was it that Morak Boba Fett? yeah whatever yeah where we got to pay uh 28 dollars for two extra little stormtrooper helmets <laughs> yeah that was supposed to be hey, part those of stormtrooper helmet the, 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 sorry jason those stormtrooper helmets are a lot of money to print ryan come on <laughs> just give us the whole figure at least 
Yeah, it was supposed <laughs> to be part of a Haslam. But anyways, moving on, Ryan, where can people find you if they want a custom figure? Uh, do you still well, do that? No, no. Okay, never mind. You, you come to me. Um, that's the main thing nowadays. Um, I'm I'm Ryan Shaw on Facebook, and for some reason I'm Bantha Five on Instagram. That was my old Rebel Scum username. I'll have to follow so, you after this. Yeah, that's where I am, and uh, I just put up that Vader I made last week on Instagram. So if you want to see what that looks like, check over, uh, head over or to Instagram any, or see any of my old stuff. Yep. Uh, thank you for listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. If you could, please leave a like and a five-star review of the show anywhere you listen to podcasts. It really helps us out and points people to our show. Follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Send us an email or message us. We love to, we love your feedback and love to make you part of the show like we did with uh, Ryan this week. Uh, our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smugglers Galaxy logo and to Levi Waterhouse for the music. Hasbro re-release VC66. Hashtag vote with your wallet. Pass on what you've learned. Be a positive force in the collecting community. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Thanks for that.